This sets our fear and spark courage. You know death and brings up the new life. So we don't come before you to worship, handing over to you all the leads on some. Renew us in this time of worship and praise, so that we may serve you with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. That's in number 425. We praise you, O Lord. Joseph's story is the 
Prabhupada for giving this. And also, did you talk to the forgiveness? And so, we're talking about forgiveness today. It's a very hard story. It's not an easy story. It's easy to say, forgive someone else, but it's hard to forgive someone in your life who hurt you the most. That's uh, it's passing 6.45, follow me to Matthew 7. Amen. Um. 
Amen. Our response reading from Psalm is 103, verses 8 to 13. The Lord is merciful and gracious. So will and the bounty of his steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor will he pay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, as far as the earth is from the west, as the Father's compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for his children. Our testimony from Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 to 21. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, But if Joseph still bears the goods against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we took him. So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. He says to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in the front of you. I therefore Peace will give the crimes of the servant of God of your father. Joseph wept, and they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, You are here, and you are slain. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you had no harm to me, God intended to forgive, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Epistle reading is from Romans chapter 14, verse 1 to 12. Welcome those who are weak with faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling or repentance. So believe in eating anything, for the weak eat. On only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise the food of stain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed it. So <coughs> are you to pass judgment on certain of, of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand and fall for. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is unable to make them sin. Some judge one day to be better than other, another. While others just all day to be alive, that all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord, and also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain of sin honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, we do not die to ourselves, if we live. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For, the, for to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you cast judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, who do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment of the Lord. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give me praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Gospel readings from Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 35. Then there came and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to set up accounts with his slaves. When he began to reckon him, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and 
payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And I appeared for him the Lord of the slave, releasing and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he lived and went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarius, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Hey, what are you all? Then his fellow slave fell down and plead with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, then he went on with he went and put him into prison until he would pay the, pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave. I forgive you all the doubt because you did with me. Should you not have had mercy on your brother's slave and have mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed over to be tortured until you pay his entire debt. So, my heavenly Father, we also do, do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of God to the people of God. Thank you, Jesus. That's number 638, take time. Okay, let's 
is fine. It's okay. But in your heart, oh my God, this is my new shirt. Poor Simon. Cut you off in traffic. And as a Christian, sometimes you put the uh, Christian logo, get you back to your car, but somebody just cut you in, and then you are kind of upset. But because of the logo back of your car, maybe it's like, ah, should I honk it? Or just be nice to the person? But this is a little bit harder. Somebody, you know, just talk to you. You look like racist, even though you are not. How you respond? Even in church meetings, if sometimes somebody's bashing you, or somebody's talking harshly on you, have a different opinions. How you respond to these people? So it's many passages about forgiveness. We have small forgiveness, small act. We also have big act, big forgiveness. In your life, in your lifetime, sometimes you have to forgive small things. Sometimes you have to forgive the big So what are we going to do first? Can you forgive not only small act, but also big act? Well, I guess here we don't like the word debt. How many of you love the word debt? I love debt. Well, not a lot of young people love debt. They use a credit card and buy all the things they can find. It. Oh my God, I'm going to pay my credit card. But as this wise people like you, I said, oh, that's not good. That is not good. Well, we're going to do we're going to have debts. I get, I'm not really sure, but you're going to pay off your mortgages, right? No debts? But still have debts. But, you know, sometimes we find it out that that is not good. But have you think about that as a sin? That is sin. When you pray the Lord's Prayer, that. Using that. We need that and we sing to God. So, we need all, we are all debtors to God. Here, anybody who can say, I have no debt to God. I have no sin to God. We all have debts. We all have sins. I remember when the buyer in Thailand broke up and then with the social government raised it fine to, to $25,000 in my career. So $25,000. Maybe for you, maybe it's time hard to still maybe able to pay the debt, the fine, but for the homeless people. $25,000 is impossible amount to pay. So what about the here, the story in Matthew, when the king found it out, his servant owed him 10,000 talents. So we know 10,000 dollars is a lot of large amount. It could be between 12 million dollars and 1 billion dollars US. I hope you had that amount of money. 
So we know that it's almost impossible for us to have like that. So it's almost impossible money to pay it back. When the slave came to the king, the master, asked, give me time, I'll pay back. Well, the master knows that's the lie. It is impossible to pay the debt. So the master forgave his debt. While he's coming up the place, he's encountering to another slave who owe him a denar- 100 denarius. I, I kind of like the expression of the Bible here. He was grabbing the other servant's neck <clears throat> and then pain. And now I will kill you. Imagine right before there's so many deaths unable to pay. But here the service, the, the amount can be payable by the other servant. If you wait for a little more, but I said, pay me. If not, I'm going to put you in the prison. Then they put the other servant in the prison. Well, this, you know, this is kind of our culture we are living in. It's for the younger generations. No mercy. Be strong. Achieve whatever I want. Like Nike, just do it. He said in Roman culture back there, mercy was not seen as a virtue, but was seen as a sign of weakness. Mercy was not, not seen as a virtue, but a sign of weakness. If you show mercy, oh, you're weak. So, no mercy. That's from one culture that is inherited to our culture. But Christianity said, no, no, no. We need mercy. We need God's mercy every day. So, the one who showed the mercy to others, at last week, was strong. Because the strong can show the mercy. God showed mercy to us. When you read the Bible here, Jesus showed mercy to everyone, wherever he went. The lame, blind, crippled. So many people, men by each other, he showed mercy. Mercy is always important. As I said, if the one who has power can show the mercy, the one who has power can forgive the one who hurt you. Anybody remember CS3s? Yes, you guys remember CS3s, right? As well known writer from England. And he admitted that he couldn't forgive his school master in his early childhood. He went to the England and got into a boarding school with his brother aged by nine, and the boarding school master was so harsh on him and his brother for six years. So he was tortured somehow, and he was traumatized, but he was a very smart, intelligent, well-educated, and professor at Oxford. But he couldn't forgive his schoolmaster in his early childhood. To try 
As it became Christian, he tried to forgive less or less. And it's almost impossible. Several months before he died, he finally forgave his class. So forgiveness is not one moment. Forgiveness is a process, especially when it occurs the most. In the Lord's Prayer, we, we, uh, we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Imagine if you don't forgive our debtors in this world, God wouldn't forgive us. What do you mean? I mean God would rather forgive you. Whatever you do here on earth. As parents, I can understand it. I'd rather forgive what my kids have done wrong. They are confessed to me say, Dad, I did such a wrong thing. I love to forgive. I'm waiting. That God's like. Forgiveness is from our hearts. Our hearts. Can you forgive those people who hurt you the most? Well, one person has grown up and become an adult and he shared his story when he was a kid. When he was a kid, he prayed every night for a new bicycle. Anybody ever experienced when you're a kid? You pray, Lord, give me a new bicycle. I did it. But with a little bicycle, Kind of God's not responding to my prayer. Well, so he uh, kept, 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 kept praying for his new bicycle. And what happened? So he learned the Lord doesn't work that way. And then he stole one bicycle. Then pray for, pray for God's forgiveness. So yes, you know, that's like we are like a kid. We made a mistake. We did something wrong, and then God, uh, I, I did something wrong, forgive me. But I found that our forgiveness is not with God only, but with the person, the kid who stole the bicycle. If you are the bicycle owner, would you forgive that person, the, the boy who stole his bicycle? It's a new bicycle. Maybe this boy does, doesn't come to the bicycle owner and say, return the bicycle. Sorry, I made a big mistake. This is your bicycle, but I I'm truly sorry. Forgive me. You know, forgiveness starts from God who we try to finish with the person. That's what we think of him. So we all need forgiveness. Forgiveness takes courage. Forgiveness takes a mercy. And forgiveness takes a lot. Well, I try to remember this, this story here, and yeah, as a Christian, I should forgive people. So every morning I try to drive in the wind, winter junction in Halifax through the road, through the dark moss in the Mackey Bridge. And the people are kind of lying on in the morning to go through that traffic and the two lady two ladies there the one's going straight one's going to be a bad board so you know I'm always knowing somebody who's coming to the other lane 
sink it in to get into my traffic line here. And notice it. Oh my goodness. How do I do that? Almost every morning. So every morning I start to pray, Lord, I know this guy is coming in to cut into my traffic again. What am I going to do? Luckily, I don't put the uh, in the kitchen, the, you know, this fish line on my back or car. So, should I honk it or is it not able to protect him, not able him to cut, to cut it through? For the second time, I see how it comes. Yeah, oh, I don't like it. God. When did I realize that I was so late? So I had to get in the same way to get into the line and cut in. Well, what happened? Thank God. As I forgive this person, that driver forgave me to cut in. What small act of forgiveness? We all need small forgiveness. Each time we go in. But we leave big forgiveness. I met a young person, a young, young boy, about 25, 26, who had been hurt by his dad when he was 9, 11, and half 10. His dad was very violent, punching him, beating him when he was drunk. So he's in trauma. And because of he was very violent, he became and became a car. He tried to he committed a car and got into jail. He needed counseling, he needed therapy, but importantly, he needed to forgive. That's hard. That requires big act. So we need to ask ourselves can I forgive people who hurt me the most? Still, I have something in my mind. I'm still not able to forgive. At the top of a CS3, when he forgave his schoolmaster, schoolmaster already passed away 30 years ago. CSS was never a chance to reconcile with this schoolmaster. Maybe in our lives, some of the people do find that, yeah, I hate it. But think about what Jesus has done and the followers of Jesus Christ. When we ask for God's mercy to help us, Lord, I pray to forgive that person. So, give us courage, give us mercy, and give us grace. That's all we need. We all know at the end of Christ's life on the cross, he asked God to forgive the people who kill him. Father, they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. That's the last word. So we all need forgiveness, no matter who you are, no matter what you have done. We all need forgiveness in each other, and also to all of there who may hurt you the most. So ask God, God, forgive me, and forgive him or her, so I understand your your heart, you want your heart forgive our sins. Amen. The offering will be received.
thanks to you, God, because you have blessed us with so much. <coughs> you know that others have put it on us. Bless our gifts. So they touch lives and you have become rules of justice in the world. For the shape of Jesus Christ, to send us our in love. Amen. Shall we pray? Loving and merciful God, we come before you this day right after the hurricane Ian. Lord, we have a wonderful experience in our week, but and we are encountering the storm that we have been challenged. Lord, this is like our life. And we have a wonderful life, but sometimes we are encountering the storm, the wounds, the hurts we don't want to have. Some of the challenges have caused us to worry and strike the Lord. Then we need your grace. Other challenges challenge bring to us clear directions for our lives. Lord, we need your guidance. In all of this, you are with us, bringing healing and peace to our lives. Lord, we offer to you the names of those who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost and alienated, wondering if anyone cares about them. But we know you care. Hear our prayers, Lord. Bring your healing mercies to all these people who have named with our hearts and our voices. We also pray to you, loving God, named in situations of great joy and celebration. Our grandchildren who live at the University College, who started new work, who promoted, who had new relationships, so much joy. In their lives. For you have been in our midst during these times, as well as during the difficult times. Bring your loving presence to all these people who we have named with our hearts and our voices. And work in us and in all for whom we pray. As we sum up our prayers in the words you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. It does not have temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For it has the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Blessing number 730 of World War II.
just set the challenging goal before us to forgive someone not just seven times, but seven times seven. So take up the challenge as you go and allow forgiveness to change your life. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion in this Holy Spirit bless and redeem. Amen. Uh-huh.